it's time once again to explore life in a church divided. In our last video, we saw that differences in doctrine are one of the main causes uh, for divisions between Christians. Like we talked about, there's a reason for that. Doctrine is what you hold on to as God's truth. And doctrine is also what you hold out to others as God's truth. So if your doctrine goes too far off the rails, you won't be holding out Jesus to other people or the hope that he brings. You might even end up leading other people away from Jesus and away from a genuine Christian faith. And so doctrine sometimes is worth dividing over in order to make sure that the doctrine is holding out Jesus as purely and as well as possible. But that, of course, left us with a pretty important question. How do Christians even decide what counts as good or bad doctrine? Where are we supposed to go to test whether what we're holding is actually on target or not? Well, in this video, we're finally going to start digging into the differences between all of these groups of Christians, and we'll start with that question about where Christians go to decide what counts as good or bad doctrine. To put it another way, we'll start by looking at the different sources that Christians use to get their doctrine and to judge their doctrine, because that actually is one of the big dividing lines between different groups of Christians. Some Christians turn to different sources for their doctrine than other Christians do. And these different sources that Christians go to actually makes a big difference for two reasons. The first reason is that the very fact we're using different sources is a big difference all on its own. If you're going to the Bible to figure out what God is like, and I'm going to my local library's section on witchcraft and wizardry to figure out what God's like, it's pretty obvious we have a very different view of what's a good source of information about God. But the second reason is that if we have different sources, we're almost certainly going to have differences on a lot of other things later down the road. My books on witchcraft are almost certainly going to give me a whole host of different ideas about God than your Bible is going to give you. Different sources will very likely lead us to a lot of other differences in doctrine. Now, all things being equal, there's more or less five different places that different Christians look to as sources for their doctrine. Now, when I say a source of doctrine, by the way, I mean that that source is where Christians are going to figure out what to believe and what to hold out about God in the first place. So the five usual sources different Christians go to are First of all, the Bible. You probably know what that is already. Second of all, tradition. Uh, in other words, things that are passed down to us from people in the past. Uh, third, human reason. Things like figuring out what seems logical or fits with the facts as we understand them. Fourth, um, there's experience. Things that happen to you, like maybe a vision or having really strong feelings about something and so forth. And fifth, an authority figure, or in other words, someone who we take to be in this special position that we respect. Now, when I say each of these are sources that different Christians go to, I don't mean that any group of Christians goes to only one of these. I mean, these are different sources that Christians pull from to different degrees. For instance, Virtually every Christian group agrees the Bible is a pretty important place to go to to get an idea of God. But some Christian groups, groups like the Presbyterian Church in America, or the Episcopalian Church, or the ELCA, which, by the way, stands for Evangelical Lutheran Church of America, those are all church bodies that are very clear that they want to give more weight to human reason than they do to the Bible. So for instance, if there seems to be some disagreement between what um, our attempts to think through a problem tells us and what the Bible tells us, like if we decide that modern psychology leads us to think uh, homosexuality is normal and not sinful, well, Christians in those groups will tend to go where their own reasoning leads them rather than go to where the Bible leads them. 
And again, naturally, they'll tend to come up with very different ideas about God and Jesus than Christians who give the Bible more weight than human reason do. Other Christian groups give a huge amount of weight to tradition. While less common in America, um, the Eastern Orthodox Christians are probably the best example of this. They do take the Bible very seriously, but they also put a huge amount of emphasis on the traditions that developed in the early church and what Christians throughout history have said about God. So much so that they often give those uh, voices of tradition about the same weight as the Bible. They also believe that there were traditions that were handed down from the apostles themselves that never got written down in the Bible. And so these um, traditions from the apostles that were passed on by word of mouth are looked on as having equal weight with the Bible. And so because of that, the Eastern Orthodox believe some things that Christians who don't hold on to those traditions would never believe. There are also groups that give authority figures the most weight. For instance, there are groups like the Seventh-day Adventists who believe that God has very recently sent new prophets. And these prophets have an inside view of God and his will. And so Christians who um, believe that there are prophets that God sends still will look to those kinds of authority figures and take the words of those prophets to be basically the word of God himself. And therefore, they will hold those words as completely equal to the Bible, and in some cases, as even more important than the Bible. And speaking of tradition and authority as sources, it's worth mentioning that the Roman Catholic Church is a group that holds both tradition and authority figures as sources of doctrine that stand right alongside the Bible as of equal weight to the Bible. Um, like the Eastern Orthodox, Roman Catholics believe there is a tradition that's been passed down by the apostles through word of mouth that isn't in the Bible and which carries equal weight with the Bible. The Catholics also hold that the Pope is the vicar of Christ on earth and that the Pope and the leaders of the Roman Church therefore have the authority to define and to develop doctrine. Basically, that means that when the Pope defines some kind of belief as doctrine, for instance, that uh, Mary was free from original sin, then all Roman Catholics are supposed to hold on to that doctrine and hold it out as though it's the truth of God. Now, there are other groups that give personal experience a huge amount of weight. The Assembly of God churches, or the Church of the Nazarene, and lots of non-denominational congregations put a huge premium on having some kind of personal experience of the Holy Spirit coming on you and filling you, or having some kind of sense that God is speaking to you um, directly in some way, so that you can let that experience give you a good sense of what God's attitude toward you is, or what he's up to and what he wants you to do. Methodists also tend to give a lot of weight to emotions and personal experiences as solid ways to get a sense of who God is and, well, how you stand with him, frankly. And of course, there are also groups of Christians that want the Bible to be the only source of doctrine that they go to. And that doesn't necessarily mean that these groups don't have any use for reason or tradition or experience or other authority figures. It does mean that for these groups, they want the Bible to have the first and the last word on everything that has to do with faith and life. So for those groups, wherever there might seem to be a conflict between the Bible or any of these other ways you might learn something about God, the Bible should always win out. Many Baptist groups, um, a lot of conservative non-denominational congregations, in fact, our own Lutheran Church Missouri Synod, are all really good examples of Christian groups that try to hold the Bible and only the Bible as ever being able to be a source for doctrine. Particularly, these groups tend to emphasize that only the Bible can ever serve as a source for what you hold out to others as the truth of God. Now, it is worth repeating that almost every Christian group does hold that the Bible is a source of doctrine. 
And as we've just pointed out, different groups of Christians also give different amounts of weight to other kinds of sources for their doctrine. And again, that's a big deal. If you go to several places to dig up dirt to put in your garden, you're very likely going to end up with very different kinds of dirt in your garden than the people who are digging somewhere else or who are only digging in one spot. Same goes for doctrine. Different groups go to different places to dig for God's truth. And predictably, what they end up holding as God's truth ends up looking very different from the Christians who are digging somewhere else. It is therefore profoundly important to always have the right source for your doctrine and to know, for instance, what sources your own congregations are using. And I have to say, if you or your congregation are digging somewhere besides God's own word for God's truth, you are very likely going to come up with something very different than what God has to say for himself. And that is not a good place to be. But that's all for now. We'll see you next time when we start digging into the different doctrines Christians hold about what's quite probably the most important question of all. How are we saved and come to live with God forever?